Hi, I'm Kiran Rudumni, Senior Staff Engineer with Qualcomm Innovation Center. In this tutorial, you will learn how to make kernel changes and rebuild to configure low-speed UART on the Dragonboard 14C, which features the Qualcomm Snapdragon 14 processor, also known as APQ8016. Let's get started. The Android open source code for Dragonboard 14C is hosted on www.coderora.org a Linux Foundation website. To access the source code, first click on Android for MSM project and then select Wiki to find the listing of all the Snapdragon chipsets for which Android open source code is hosted, including the APQ8016. Before you download the code, you need to have repo set up on your Linux machine. The release page on Code Aurora lists manifest files for various Snapdragon chipsets. These are the couple of basic repo commands that you would use to clone the source code for Dragonboard 410C. The exact manifest that you need to use is specified in the Android software release notes for Dragonboard 410C. Please refer to that. Once you have the exact manifest, your command for repo in it will look something like this. This is an example manifest file which would vary depending on the release you're on for Dragonboard 410C. After doing repo in it, you need to do repo sync. You can pass the arguments minus J4, minus J8, minus J16 to speed up the cloning process. This would depend on the number of cores your Linux machine has. Once reposync is complete, your local directory should have complete Android open source code, which would include kernel source code as well. In order to configure UART in low speed mode for Dragonboard 410C, we basically need to edit three kernel source files. One is the msm8916.dtsi, msm8916.pincontrol.dtsi file, clock gcc8916 file. Dragonboard 14C uses the kernel version 3.10, which is based on the device tree model. The kernel device tree is like an XML, which has node and properties specific to the hardware. You can edit the device tree to suit various hardware configurations and rebuild the kernel, flash it to the device and test your changes. To understand what values need to be set to different node properties, please also refer to this kernel device tree documentation file msm underscore serial dot text. Let's look at the first DDSI file. Here you will see that BLSP underscore BLSP1 underscore UART2 is configured for low speed UART serial use case. The address is 78B0000. The compatible property LSUART specifies that it is low speed UART. You need to make sure the interrupt pins, the clocks are configured properly. The second file that we need to check is MSM8916 pin control file. This is used to configure GPIOs. Here you will find UART console configured with GPIO4 and GPIO5. You can double check in the schematics of Dragonboard 410C. Here you will see that the APQ GPIO4 is UART underscore TX. APQ GPIO5 is UART underscore RX. Those are the two GPIOs that have been used. These are pre-configured for you in the default release. Then you need to also make sure the clock file is configured properly for BLSP1 underscore UR2 underscore apps underscore clock underscore source. Once you are done making the edits to these files, you are ready to rebuild your kernel image. For that, you need to run the command source 
build env setup dot sh from your android root source directory this will set up your environment with all the necessary tool chains to generate either the android images or the kernel itself now you have to run the launch command by passing the argument msm89 16 underscore 64 user debug this will configure the system in order to regenerate the kernel image for the MSM 8916 64 bit platform. The MSM 8916 configuration is also valid for the APQ 8016 chipset. Now you can do make minus J8 boot image to regenerate the kernel image. This is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to cancel it right here. Once the command completes successfully, you will find the boot.img in out target product msm 8916 64 boot.img. This is the file you need to fast boot flash onto the Dragonboard 410C. Since I've already done that and connected my device, if I do ADB devices, you see an ID is displayed. You can also double check that from your device manager at ADB is displayed. For this, you need to have Fastboot and ADB drivers configured on your machine. Now I can, uh, since I've already rebooted uh, by flashing the boot.img using the command fastboot flash boot boot.img. I use this command to fastboot flash to the device and reboot at the board. If the device is in ADB, you can do ADB reboot bootloader to get the device in fast boot mode or you can also use volume minus button while powering up the Dragonboard 410C to bring it to fast boot mode. After doing this, uh, you can flash the boot.img. Since I've already done that and I'm in ADB mode, I can go to the shell of the device by doing adb shell. Now if I go to slash dev directory and list tty hsl0, I see tty hsl0 listed without any problems. This means the low speed UART has been successfully configured on 410c platform. If you have multiple UARTs, you can also set aliases in your device tree file. The kernel can also be reconfigured to enable I2C peripherals, SPI peripherals and various GPIOs. You can make changes to the device trees and other board related files in order to enable these peripherals. For more details, check out the peripheral guide for Dragonboard 410C. Visit the Qualcomm Developer Network to learn more about the Dragonboard 410C. Thank you for taking this tutorial.